So you want to go tree planting. Again. Didn't learn your lesson last time. Well, if you're really that dead set on punishing yourself, you might as well make some money while you're out there. So let me share some tips from veterans and highballers that should help you make the most of your season, as well as some experimental tech to trick out your gear if you're into that sort of thing. Now, everybody comes up with their own techniques and their own personal way of doing things, so this isn't the sort of thing where you could really make a, a full-on how-to guide. These are just some tips that I found useful that I want to share because you might find them useful. So let's jump right in. The first thing I want to talk about is the outfit. Now, it's not a fashion show. It's all personal preference. It doesn't matter. and Just wear whatever you like. But what I like is a loose-fitting, oversized... Uh, button-up white dress shirt because I can turn the collar up and have this part all covered. I feel like it keeps the bugs off. There's also some people who say bugs have a harder time seeing the white. That might be true or maybe it's just because it's a uh... Maybe it's just better because it's a little cooler, but either way, that's my preference. Then I'll often take a t-shirt and tie that around my head because it also covers more. Like I said, that's just me, you do you. Now the gloves on the other hand, we're out here to make money, not spend money. So you will wear out one glove faster than the other, unless you're planting ambi, which is congratulations. But for me, the hand that goes into the dirt, the glove wears out super fast. So if you want to get more mileage out of your gloves, just take the one from the other hand, turn it upside down and put that on your tree hand. You'll get twice as much use out of a single pair. Now, speaking of spending less money, I always duct tape my boots to my pants in the morning because getting sticks and rocks in your boots, which you definitely will, will slow you down and it's super uncomfortable. So it's kind of a must have, but duct tape is not cheap and it kind of tears the fabric when you rip it off. Not to mention leaves behind that sticky glue that you really can't clean. Not that I'm trying to keep my outfit clean per se, but regardless, it's also really time consuming to do that every morning and then tear it off at the end of the night. A better way is to make a small investment in some gaiters. Those are those things that you like strap around your, your lower leg, your ankle, and they just cover that whole section. And that'll prevent any sticks and rocks from getting in. Plus it's a lot faster to take on and off and they're reusable. They're not cheap, but they cost about the same as duct taping your legs for an entire season. So it's money well spent if you're gonna keep doing this. That's all I'm gonna say about the outfit, but even more important than that are your habits. I could go on and on about all the little things that I've done to save time or that other people have told me, but here's the one that I think is the most important. Don't catch. Now I know that sounds like a joke. You've probably heard it before, but I'm serious. Don't stop. And most importantly, don't take your bags off. It sounds kind of crazy, but the highballer from last year who was always putting in way more than anyone else on the crew. That was one of his techniques. If you don't take your bags off and you just load up your trees while they're still on yeah, you, well, actually, yeah, and you. obviously you're gonna need to eat and drink and that sort of thing, but don't stop to do it and just get right back out there. A lot of highballers and vets agree that it's these micro habits that make the difference between a 1500 tree day and a 2500 tree day. We'll get into the tech tips next, but first here's a quick word from our sponsor. Welcome to Highballer Tips with Captain Duffshot. Today's tip, if there's no flag, there's no tree. A highballer's job is making money, and there's no money in replants. Besides, a little redundancy is good. So keep on trucking, champ. Nice technique. And if anyone says anything about double plants, just blame it on the rookie. Isn't even my rookie year. Like, yes, I, yes, I left in 2019. But... <laughs> Shut up, rookie. <laughs> Now, Tree Planter doesn't have much for gear, but I've got some tips for both of them. Good enough. Your bags, for example. Now, you probably already know you want most of the weight on your hips, and here's a spot where female planters actually have a bit of advantage, because a lot of females have hips wider than the waist, so it's easier to have to just, like, sit your bags and cinch them on there. But I found a way to close the gap. See, here is my solution. I've got this massive chunk of foam, and I will say this is not ideal. This is just a, a garbage piece of foam. You'd be better off with something like a, a, a closed cell, like a something that doesn't absorb water, something like, um, I'll find a picture. Anyway, without it, this wasn't possible, but I find with this extra padding, 
the bags sit comfortably on the hips and I don't need the shoulder straps, which is great because every time you bend over and you're sort of flexing into that shoulder strap, you're kind of putting extra strain on your back and it's just extra work. So if you can find a way to set these up so that they just sit with no shoulder straps, you'll be moving faster and getting tired a lot less quickly. In order to attach it, I just went to Canadian Tire and grabbed one of those things of Velcro, like a big thick piece, and stuck that on. And it's actually held on surprisingly well, but there's not really a whole lot of uh, force picking it off when it's tightened down to you. And those things are all Velcro too. Just take off the original pads and slap this on there. And I've also found that with a full bag, it's a little bit too heavy. So I will start with the shoulder straps still on. And then after I get it like a hundred trees in, I'll drop the shoulder straps and pick up speed. This is a first draft, so I would do it better next time. And where I'd improve it is uh, number one, I would use a better quality foam because this stuff kind of sucks, but it's what I was able to find. And I wouldn't put the Velcro right in the middle next time. I would put it right on the top because of course it has the tendency to push down and I found a lot of the time this will just like roll up and give me, it's not maximizing on the padding there. So if it was higher up, then the weight would like crush it all down together and I think it would work a lot better. Another thing, which was not my idea, but I find this did help a lot, is instead of the flagger pouch, I just got one of these. This is one of those smaller Tupperware bins and you can find these anywhere. It just makes it super easy to switch out your flagger. I tried pulling out the the cardboard center of the flag and uh, just drilled a hole so I could pull it out from the center of the flagger, but that's just a waste because as soon as you get through about half of it, it kind of collapses on itself and then it just gets tangled. It's no good. I just cut a hole in the one corner and feed the flag through that. Works great. Captain Toughshot again with another highballer tip. Always remember, you're paid to get rid of trees. A hollow stump is perfect for a bundle. Nobody ever planted 4K in a day. And if somebody cuts you off, stash a few in his bag. He earned them. Nice technique! <laughs> now, let's talk about your shovel. Your shovel technique will decide more than anything how you want your shovel set up, but it would be a mistake to take it into the bush straight off the rack without any modification. And the first and most important thing is to cut it to the right length. See, having a shovel that's just too long is not making the most of your of the power of your arm. If you have a shovel, let me show you. The idea, I believe, is to make the most of the force you're able to put into it by extending your arm. So essentially, you want your arm to be fully extended when the shovel hits the ground, because that way you're translating the most energy from the same motion into the shovel thrust. So basically, if you're holding it loose at your side, it shouldn't be touching the ground, or just barely. And the other thing is the angle. When you shorten the shovel, you'll be able to adjust the angle of your handle. And personally, I like mine so that it's just a little bit, it's almost straight with the blade with a little bit of a tilt towards the outside of my arm, because that's just where the wrist sits. Basically, stand relaxed holding your shovel, and you want the blade to be directly parallel with your leg. So your wrist will give it a little bit of a twist, and you want to include that in the placement of the handle. It's up to you, of course, but that's what everybody told me to do, and it seems to work great. Another thing I wouldn't be without is the extra padding on the handle. Just a big piece of foam, wrap the heck out of it with tape. It's a lot more comfortable throughout the season. Another important modification to speed you up, get rid of your kickers. If you're having to use a kicker, you're in the wrong spot. They get in the way and get caught on all the duff and all the sticks on the way in and on the way out. It's just gonna slow you down and make it harder to find the sweet, sweet dirt you're looking for. Trust me, you'll be a better, faster planter if you stop using your kicker. And while you're grinding those off, you can also take a little bit of material off of that just to narrow the blade. But don't try and sharpen the blade because that'll weaken it and it will break. They're not made of they're, they're just metal. Hi, Baller Tips here to talk to you about Slash. Found a schnarvy spot you don't want to climb into? Don't. Scaling obstacles wastes time and energy that should be spent making money. The High Baller just flag bombs it. Nice technique! If somebody asks, blame the rookie. Not a rookie! Whatever, rookie. Now this next one, it's not for everybody, but some of you might really like this. 
We're talking about maximizing the thrust on your shovel, right? Check this out. These are wheel weights. They're what they use to balance tires in tire shops. They used to be lead. A lot of them are steel nowadays. Doesn't make any difference. You go down to a tire shop and they will have a bin full of these things. Just ask nicely and they'll probably let you grab some. That's where these came from. So I've got a whole collection and I'll show you what you do. We're gonna put them on the shovel handle. So take some tape. I'm gonna use E-tape even though it's not the strongest. And you're gonna wanna make sure you create a bit of a, a stop point for them. Otherwise they're gonna slide down and you're gonna lose them. Then just spread them out evenly on a piece of tape and wrap them around the shovel handle. Make sure you tie it on there really good with lots of tape and suddenly you'll be busting through the toughest clay and hardest rock piles with no trouble at all. It's all cream now. I call it the moose knuckle and it doesn't look stupid if it works. It is still experimental so I'm ironing out a few kinks. A couple problems I've run into is the tape gets beat up and then it will fall off so I need to find a stronger tape, maybe Gorilla Tape or something, or I'm not sure. It doesn't last forever. It is an unfinished prototype, but despite its faults, it still combines the dirt-piercing power of a staff shovel with the agility and mobility of a shorty little spoon. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you're still having trouble, just plant more trees. Instead of breaking down boxes, make your rookie do it. It's faster. <laughs> and remember, rookie aren't people. <laughs> <laughs>